guys, this is Princess Lucids, and I am doing a 2 versus 2 supposedly CWB 1 million denarii battle. And I'll explain the whole supposedly CWB thing in a minute. Um, my army, let's look at my army. My army is uh, 6 urbans, 4 legionary first cohorts, uh, 4 archer auxilia, and 6 praetorian cav, and they're all maxed out. There's no need to describe upgrades because they're all maxed out if it's a million. It's pretty obvious that that's how it's going to be. Um, over here, my ally D-Dog, we brought almost the exact same army. It was really weird. I've been having that thing lately where his or where my allies and I always seem to bring the exact same army or close or even the enemies. Like in my first battle, if you've seen my first battle, Epic Numidian Legionnaire Spam, you'll see that um, our armies were virtually identical kind of weird. But D-Dog brought six urban cohorts, five units of Archer Auxilia, three legionary first cohorts, and six Praetorian Cav. And his general's in the one unit, that's why it's back here. Um, I put my general with my urban cohorts. It's just easier to keep them alive because I'm not very, um, my Cav tend to die a lot. I'm, I'm, even though I've had this game for half a year now, uh, I'm still learning new things every day. Um, and I think that's true of even people who've played a long time and are supposedly pro. Um, in my next battle, you'll see my incompetence. I'll, I'm In my next battle that I post, I'll show my incompetence with a faction I know very little about. Um, so yeah. And it should start up soon. And then you'll know why, why I named this uh, CWB Rule Breakers. Um, there was this huge argument between our our enemies, or Reboric, I think, Reborius, and Jorik. I got Jorik and Reborius mixed up over CWB rules because they brought artillery. They brought scorpions. Jorik brought one and. Reborius brought two, but otherwise their army's identical, and even their deployment was identical. Um, and supposedly he said that, or Jorik was our host, he supposedly said that artillery was allowed, but they were pretty obviously in private chat, because they never said one thing out loud in the lobby, and yet, somehow they brought the exact same army, even down to the same artillery. So, yeah, but both of them brought six urbans, maxed out obviously, Six Praetorian Cav, uh, five units of Archer Auxilia. No, I think he brought six. Yeah, he brought six and one Scorpion. And I think he might have brought five, so he could have two Scorpions. Nope, he brought six. Six and two Scorpions. Okay. So, um, we have the, um, the infantry advantage, D Dog and I. Um, they have the archer advantage because D Dog brought five and I brought four, but we have, or in, we're actually equal matched in cavalry, so it's a it's a very interesting fight. We're equal in one, out not matched in one, and uh, and cannot match them in one. So let's just see how this plays out. Um, but they accused us of breaking CWB rules. They brought artillery, and yet they accuse us of having more than six of the same unit. They claim that CWB rules means that uh, you can't have more than six of heavy infantry, uh, which we know is not true, at least us Roman Puddle War players. If it turns out that that does, that is true, then I will issue a formal apology to Dor or Jorik and Reborius, but I've never had anything so far in all my time playing, in all my half a year playing, to suggest that that's CWB rules. Here I go into Testudo, I was actually at a friend's house at this time, and he wanted to know what Testudo looked like in this game, so I obliged because we weren't really doing anything anyway. So if you were wondering why I went into Testudo, that's why. I just wanted to show him what it looked like in this game, because it's freaking sweet. Um, that's not the formation you want to be in for Pila. That one right there. Now, Testudo, I've actually had it used against me when I threw Pila, and it did absolutely no damage. So, if you want to, um, 
play like that, that's cool, but um, it, it's really hurtful if cavalry charges you while you're in Testudo, you'll get flung all over the place, and you can't really defend yourself while in Testudo. That's the only problem I have with Testudo. Um, so yeah, um, so we just kind of sit here for a couple of minutes arguing about um, who broke CWB rules. And so they move up to start getting some strikes with their scorpions, because they're... I don't want to really say anything inappropriate, I guess. I'll say this more in part two, but um, for the courtesy of our younger listeners, if I have any, uh, I really don't want any um, inappropriateness on my channel. And it's not to say that I'm not allowed to do appropriate, inappropriate things, because if I weren't, then I wouldn't be on YouTube. Um, but for the sake of younger audiences, I would prefer if um, expletives and such not be used in my channel. Which means that's a challenge for me because um, I regularly use expletives, but not like super regularly, but you know. Um, so anyway, we're lining up to fight, um, and they start shooting with their scorpions pretty soon. Takes one man out of my general's unit. They're us. hit him, see? Right there. And then this man moves up to take his place. And he gets some failed shots on my archers and stuff. And there, I think he might take one or two men out of this legionary cohort unit. Because there's the dead guy. I think he takes another one out here. But at any rate, he takes only two or three before I say, Hey D-Dog, do you want to take these guys on? And he's like, sure man. So we... We march right up and you'll see what happens in part two. Um, I'm actually recording part one after part two because I already recorded part one and then I went back to watch it and it was terrible. The The audio didn't even correspond to the, um, the video and the video was really really laggy so uh, I just ditched it and made this one. So I remember where part one stopped because it was right before the action which kind of sucks. But um, part one is all talk and part two is all action so if you want to cut straight to part two now, be my guest. But, or you can stay and listen to the last few, or last minute or so of commentary on this part. I don't care. Um, either way. So, here D Dog and I said, hell screw this, we're just going to go straight up. I don't consider hell as a cuss word, by the way, so I'm sorry if you do. But here he's still firing scorpion shots at me. You can see a little puff of dirt when it hits. I don't know why the grassy flatland map is so popular. Probably because it's flat, so there's no hill advantage. But, um, Syrian Flats is also flat, and it's in the desert, so it's pretty cool. And that's the map I choose whenever I host. I don't host very often, because my laptop doesn't support it well. Um, yeah. Oh, and guys, by the way, if you want to challenge me, just post it in the comments. Tell me what time zone you're in, tell me what time, and what time... And I will see if I can't make it some way for you to, yeah. So anyway, this ends part one, and I'll see you guys in a minute.